So my name is Eric. Uh, thank you for joining me today for this session on uh, enterprise class printing. To introduce you to myself a little bit first, uh, I'm Eric Musgrave. I'm Triceratops VP of Research and Development. So I'm in control of all of the uh, new product designs, working on uh, new technology at the company. I've actually been there for about 12 years now. Uh, I've worked on printing the whole time among the other products that we have. Uh, when I first came on board, I was working on the screwdrivers technology, which uh, a lot of you might be familiar with. Uh, it's used by thousands of companies today, and uh, probably tens to hundreds of thousands of users are using it daily to get their printing done in Citrix remote desktop environments. So when I was given the opportunity to present at Bry Forum, you know, I thought, well, you know, I don't want this to be just another bland, monotonous presentation. I want to present something cool, something hip. And so I figured kids usually know what's cool and hip, so I decided to go and ask my son, uh, you know, what should I present on? What kind of technology is cool right now? Well, unfortunately, he's 15 months old, so all I got was a bunch of da, 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 and ee, ee, and pointing. So. I couldn't really rely on him for advice unless you want to hear about LeapFrog or some of those other devices. So I went back and said, okay, well, what is Tracerit working on right now? We're working on a mobile printing solution that's enterprise class. And so I wanted to present that to you today, uh, educate you on what I mean by enterprise class first, but then also get into what printing is, what it's going to be in the future as we get uh, deeper into this mobile uh, market this consumerization, the uh, FUIT, if uh, you listen to what, how Brian Madden talks about it. And so I'm not trying to sell you on our product today. This product is under development. Obviously, it would be great if everyone in here bought it. But what I really want to find is early adopters. I'm looking for people that are you know, interested in this new cutting edge technology that are going to help us get this to market, help us make it and tweak it and really refine the design of the product and make it all it can be so that it can actually get out there and, and help you solve problems in your environments. And so let's, let's dive in now. Uh, you know, a little agenda, I want to be upfront with what I'm going to cover today. Uh, so that was the introduction. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what is enterprise class so that we're all on the same page there. Uh, then I'll just briefly touch on current solutions out there you know, for printing. Uh, and then Project Torx, this is the product that we're working on. Uh, that's where the meat of the presentation is. And then uh, briefly at the end, I want to cover some other solutions Tricerit has, just in case nobody uh, is aware of them. Uh, and then actually I'll reserve you know, 15 minutes at the end to uh, turn it over to one of our latest partners, Goliath Technologies, who has a really cool monitoring solution that you might find useful. And so we'll show you that as well. And then we'll open it up for questions at the end. So what is enterprise class? Well, the first thing you have to understand is you have to approach any claim of enterprise class with skepticism. There's no standard body that defines what enterprise class is. There's no approval process that any software company has to go through to get to put that enterprise class term on their software. And as an example of that, I could be talking about enterprise class ships, some fictional, some real. Um, or I might be talking about enterprise classes of rental cars. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uh, getting into a piece of software that's able to be deployed enterprise-wide versus departmental. You know, it's something that's not focused on one area, one department or one uh, area of your technology, like your remote printing or your uh, mobile printing. Enterprise class covers uh, everything within your company. And so as part of that, it has to be scalable. You have to be able to scale from anywhere, maybe you know, five users up to 50,000 users. You know, an enterprise class piece of software can handle either situations. And then also it needs to be customizable or flexible. Because as you deploy this to different departments in your organization, you have to understand that different departments have different needs. And so you know, this one piece of software has to be able to meet all of those different needs. And then you know, getting it out there has to be easy. This can't be difficult. Uh, that's something that is glossed over with a lot of enterprise class software, I think. And a lot of people probably think enterprise class and uh, tie that to complexity. Well, I'm defining it as ease of deployment. If you have to deploy this to 50,000 users, it has to be straightforward. Big topic today is security. So anything enterprise class has to be secure. You have to be able to depend on it, uh, not have uh, 
security leaks through this piece of software, and it has to be high performance. Now, of course, high performance means different things to different people, uh, and that's for you to decide what high performance is. You know, in terms of printing, typically we're talking about print speed, uh, you know, maybe even log on speed, because uh, printing tends to affect that in certain environments. And then the last real core thing for enterprise class is it needs to be stable, uh, robust, redundant, and name your term there, but it needs to be something you can depend on to be up and running 24-7, 365. And so as I went through and was trying to define enterprise class, I started coming up with this, or coming across this other term that's out there a lot, that's enterprise 2.0. And I started thinking, well, does enterprise 2.0 now, is that a piece of enterprise class? Should that be part of it? And so enterprise 2.0 is really about the, the ability to collaborate, share, and organize via web 2.0 technologies. And so it kind of makes sense as you start thinking about other uh, recent developments in enterprise class software, if you think about uh, some of your CRM packages like Salesforce, all of these things are traditional enterprise software that are starting to be more social. And so should enterprise class software now be social? I mean, should it have an informal rollout, uh, but also still have strong managerial support? You, know, you don't want users installing this app necessarily on their own, but you want to support them if they decide that they need it, if they hear from uh, you know, other people in the industry that they can get their job done easier and better uh, with a piece of software. And then the other thing I want to touch on briefly, and I'll explain why a little bit later in the presentation, is the idea of consumer class. When you start talking about scalability in the enterprise, what could be more scalable than something that's scaling to consumers with millions, hundreds of millions of users? You know, some of these Web 2.0 technologies are used by a tremendous amount of users compared to what your typical size enterprise is going to be. And so with that massive scalability, you know, consumer class is almost getting to the point where it requires more than what enterprise class requires. So now let me tie this back to printing. Um, as uh, Triceret has sold printing solutions over the last 12 years, we have sold mainly into remote environments, but we've talked to printing administrators across all different environments, not just within Citrix. And so as I've talked to those people, I've heard uh, stories over and over again about the complexities of printing and why you know, a real enterprise class solution is needed uh, in the printing space. One of the issues out there is the infinite combinations of printers. You know, not just the, the actual physical device, uh, but you've got all of these different brands and models within each brand that you have to be able to uh, support in your environment. And then within those, the printer drivers are problematic. You might be dealing with PostScript drivers, PCL6 drivers. They're hard to distribute, hard to keep up to date. Um, and now you start tying in uh, numerous client devices and other platforms. You know, if this isn't the 90s anymore. You don't have to just deal with Windows. And so these new environments lead to new complexity. Because now you've got not only all of the, the machines that you have control over in your environment, but you have people bringing in their laptops or bringing in their mobile devices from home, so you have these BYOD issues. You've also got remote printing issues when people are remote from home or on the road, and a lot of people in the hotel here. Uh, and then mobile printing compatibility. With these mobile devices, you have things like AirPrint that you have to deal with now. Um, can I a show of hands, how many people are familiar with what AirPrint is and what it does? Okay, so about half of you. So I'll describe it in a little bit more detail uh, as I talk about how our solution helps with that. So, you know, obviously on the product side at Triceret, I had to look at what solutions are out there. Is there a reason for Triceret to actually pursue this market? And as I was looking around, I looked and said, well, if somebody wants to solve these problems in these first two main bullet points, they need solutions from multiple vendors. There's no single vendor out there that's going to solve all of this for you. But the problem with that is that no uh, solution really has knowledge of the other solutions. So then you start getting conflicts in your environment when your Citrix printing is conflicting with your mobile printing or your desktop printing. And so what ends up happening is your users are confused. They can't get their job done. And then us as you know, help desk, IT admins, engineers, we're overloaded and we can't address all the needs. And so we're left with people finding these uh, complex workarounds 
maybe insecure workarounds uh, that you know, really you know, at the higher, highest levels of IT they're frowned upon, but the users have to do this to get their job done. And so what are those current solutions today? Well, you've got the first party solutions. So you've got things like Microsoft and Citrix, uh, Apple. They all have built in sort of the baseline level of functionality. They've given you enough to get yourself in trouble. Uh, over the years, last you know, 15, 20 years, third party enterprises have been coming out with apps to help support printing in other scenarios. They've got uh, you know, printing apps now that help you print to PDFs. There's printing apps like Triceric that helps you print in remote Citrix environments. Uh, there's things that just handle reporting and auditing of printing in your environment. Next on the list, the iOS and Android apps. Uh, for iOS, you can print natively to a certain extent with the AirPrint protocol, but that's limited. And so what you see, if you search on the App Store for printing, you'll see a slew of apps that come up that they're individual apps, they're not enterprise ready, they let you load up a PDF and they let you print it. If it's something from a vendor, such as HP, it might let you print it to HP printers. Uh, you know, Canon might let you print to Canon printers. Uh, some other third party thing might let you print to, you know, maybe quote unquote any printer, but you're gonna get questionable results as you try to do that. And so you've got these four different classes of solutions out there that aren't really covering everything from A to Z in the enterprise. And so that's where we came up with Project Torx. Let's print from any device to any printer. You know, this is kind of taking some of the Citrix marketing language from back in the day of you know, any, any, any. Well, we're applying it to printing. What we want to do is we want to make printing simple. That's the, uh, the motto of Triceret. If you see our, our slogan for the company is make it simple, make IT simple. Uh, so we want to do that with printing through this project. So what do I mean by print from any device? Obviously, as with any piece of software, we have to restrict what we actually develop for. We can't develop for everything in the market. Uh, but we've focused on these four different areas. So one is desktop printing. We support Windows, uh, any flavor really since Windows 2000. You know, Windows 98, I didn't think many people were using anymore, so I said we wouldn't support that. Uh, OS 10 we support. On the mobile side, we have iOS and Android support. Uh, Windows Phone 8 will be coming later, uh, later in the year, early next year, we'll have that out. Uh, remote printing, we have support for that, just like we have today, you know, for Citrix Zen app, uh, Microsoft's remote desktop, or any other flavor of VDI you have out there. And then also thin client printing, so you can print to those locally attached USB printers, or if you take the thin client home and you have network printers, you can print to those uh, from this piece of software. And so what do I mean by print to any printer? You know, I've described what printing to any device means. Well, so print to any printer means you know, maybe the printers you own, the printers at your house, the printers at your desk at work, um, you know, any printers that have been discovered nearby. So when you walk into uh, a conference room and you have a printer nearby, you'll be able to discover that and print to it. Uh, printers that your coworkers and friends have shared with you, and I'll show you how this happens through our software uh, later on the presentation. Uh, and then also printers that your IT admin has assigned to you. You know, we don't want to give up that control of being able to you know, set a department and force them to print to a certain printer. And so since I'm guessing everybody in this crowd is technical, I'll start right away with a, a diagram of this network and what I'm talking about. And so central to this diagram, you see this Torx server. That's really the brains of our network for this printing. That handles all of the authentication. It handles the communication back and forth between all of the clients. Uh, it lets you discover these printers. It lets you uh, save your print jobs temporarily if you need to on the network. And then on the left side of the diagram, you see all the different device types, and they all have the, uh, the Torx app installed on them. So this is an agent that gets installed on your Windows or your OS X workstation. Uh, it's an app that you can download from the Apple App Store or you know, from, the, from one of the Android app stores. Uh, it's an agent that gets installed into your Citrix session, runs on the background in your session. And then on the print server side, on the right side of the diagram, we've actually got a service that runs on all of your print servers. So any machine that you want to be able to serve printers from and serve this printing from, you can put our agent there and it automatically logs into the Torx server and starts lighting up the network. And so this is all managed through a web administrative console if you're familiar with our software currently, we have a, 
a console that we use that's a Windows-based console. Uh, for this product, we refashioned that. We've made it web-based. It's uh, based on ASP.NET, so you can basically manage this from anywhere if you want. And then for the actual devices themselves, we customize the user interface to have the user experience uh, custom or flexible for each device. So when you're on an iPad, you feel at home. When you're on a, an iPhone, you know, it, it readjusts to that screen size. When you're on OS X, it looks like an OS X app. And we thought this was important to get user buy-in uh, as you deploy this out to your environment. You know, this app is really meant to replace uh, the users going to any kind of other application to manage their printers. This app is designed for them to be able to easily find their printers instead of having to go through you know, Windows add printer dialogs or you know, some other method that you might have customized for your environment. And so some of the uses of this product, uh, which I'll show you how these things work as we go, uh, one of the things you know, I've touched on already, but it's all about getting the right printers to the right people. You, know, you can easily you know, just blanket give everybody access to every printer and let them decide which printer that they need to print to, but that's really difficult for most environments. You know, if you have you know, maybe 20 printers in your environment, at that point it gets hard for users to uh, filter through that list and figure out what they want to print to. So what we let people do through this app is discover printers based on the location. You can based on uh, what floor of the building they're on or what office they're in that day. Uh, we let you print from a guest network to corporate printers. So if you have people coming in from the outside, you can point them to the app store to download this app, give them access to your Torque server, and they'll be able to print to your printers. Uh, you can also, you know, just the normal Windows case, when you're looking to find a nearby printer uh, on a Windows device, you can find that printer and then Torx will handle the setup of that printer driver all in the background, but we'll set up that printer queue so the user doesn't have to worry about picking the right driver for their printer. Now, one of the core reasons that we started doing this really was mobile devices. Uh, and so when we started looking at this, it was really about iOS. Uh, the CEO of Tricerit, John Byrne, he's, you know, to put it bluntly, he's an Apple fanatic. He loves Apple. As soon as iPads came out, he bought one, had it on his desk, and you know, one of the first things that after you know, a few weeks of using it, he decided he wanted to do was print from it. And so he read about AirPrint, and he went out to the store and found an, a printer that actually at that time supported AirPrint. So he bought that printer, took it back to the office, and sat it on his desk. He could print to it, and you know, the results were so-so, but he could actually get text on the paper, so that was good. But then he loved the iPad so much that he actually said, I'm going to buy one for everyone in the Triceratops organization. So we went out and got iPads for everybody. Well, what do you think happened? They all started using them. They said, I want to print something. And not knowing any better, they went and they looked, they saw a list of printers, they saw one printer, and they hit print, and the print job comes out on the CEO's printer. Well, I can tell you that some of the things it printed out, he wasn't too happy to see. So uh, that's when we started toying with this idea of how to secure uh, air print on iOS devices. And also, how can you make a, a, a printer that you already have in your environment that's never going to support AirPrint, how can you make that printable from iOS? And so through our software, we're able to do that. So uh, there's some utilities out there, again, not enterprise class, that do this uh, thing we call a virtual AirPrint. And so from a Windows PC, you can actually uh, send out the broadcast on the network, the Bonjour broadcast that makes it look like it's an AirPrint printer. And when you print to it, the print job goes to your Windows workstation and then prints out to your actual physical device. And so from that point forward, uh, the, that printer will appear as though it's an AirPrint printer to all of your users. Let's well, find any of those solutions are okay for, you know, maybe at your house if you want to print, but again, they're not enterprise ready. There's no way to really manage that uh, centrally. You know, everybody would just have to install that on their workstation and use it. And then also, it's this Bonjour broadcast is a multicast on the network. So Everyone within that subnet sees that printer and can print to it. There's absolutely no security built into this AirPrint protocol. So what we did is we came up with the technology in a way to restrict AirPrint down so that when I do this virtual AirPrint broadcast, I can direct it to a single device or to a set of devices. So we're actually working on a patent right now for this technology uh, that we're doing. It's a directed multicast 
of the air print notification. So I can see on my iPhone a printer, but then I can start up my iPad and not see that printer. Or the CEO can see his printer sitting on his desk, but no one else in the organization will be able to see that print of it. So that's really one of the key technologies to be able to enable just any iOS app that has printing built in uh, to be able to print to any printer. So and also we can't, we can't gloss over printing remotely. I mean, we're all here because we you know, know and love Citrix and uh, VDI and these other flavors of remote desktop. But Citrix has no way right now of printing from your session to a printer that's local to your iPad. So if you're using receiver on your iPad, none of your printers that are on that local subnet are getting mapped into your session. So if you're at home, there's no way to print if you're using receiver to get to your application at work. We allow that through our application. And so to walk you through the scenario, uh, let's say I'm at home and I downloaded the Torx app and put it, on my, put it on my device and I loaded it up, I logged into my Torx server back at the home office, I discovered all of my printers at home so they're all there in the app. I then switch and go into Citrix Receiver. Assuming my IT admin has the Torx app installed in my Citrix session, That'll run in the background when I log in, and all of my printers from home will be automatically mapped into my session. When I go to print to them, the print job is actually going to flow from that Citrix session through the Torx network down to the Torx app on my iPad. So what you're going to actually find is there's going to be a push notification from Apple that comes down and, uh, from Citrix and uh, pops up our Torx app on the device so then the Torx app can download those print jobs and print them to the printer. Now we're hopeful with iOS 7 with some of the new backgrounding technologies we'll be able to circumvent the need for a push notification. We'll just be able to keep our Torx app running in the background. Uh, but to get the idea of how those print jobs will flow and how you'll get printing from your Citrix session down to your, your local iPad device when you're on the road. And then the, the second bullet point there is uh, when you're using uh, thin clients connecting into Citrix. You know, we do have, it's not the full Torx agent, but we do have a thin client plugin that you can put on your uh, Linux thin clients. And they enumerate the USB printers and the network printers there on those thin clients and publish them on the Torx network. We've got a lot of advanced features that we're building into this solution as well. Um, things like follow me printing and secure printing so that I can uh, print my job without knowing at the time what printer I wanted to print to. So I can print the job and have it held temporarily until I've proven that I'm standing at the device, the actual uh, printer device. You know, we can do that through things like scanning QR codes on, you know, through the, uh, the camera on the smartphone or the tablet. And then print restrictions is another big one as you get into enterprise class printing. I might have a printer that is you know, a great color printer that's for marketing. But maybe I don't want some people printing color to that printer because the ink is so expensive. Well, I'll be able through this uh, Torx software to restrict that uh, color printing down so you can only print black and white to that printer. Or maybe you can only print a certain number of pages to that printer. Those kinds of features are being built into the product. But really, again, you know, I want to say it again. This is really about making printing simple, making it simple. Uh, so we've used the mechanics of a social network to get all this done, and I'll describe in detail each of these bullets as to how we're doing this. You know, I've described already the single easy-to-use app. You know, it's a different app for each platform, but it's the same uh, feel and same user experience. It's a seamless user experience for the users. And I want to make sure that you understand that um, when I'm talking about this Torx app, this app is designed to be the app that they manage printers from, that your users are managing printers within this app. This isn't an app that we're telling you to print from. The printers will still be mapped in your native operating system and you'll still go to file print to print to those printers. And then the administrators still do have control of all of this. So let's talk about finding these printers. You know, I mentioned the mechanics of social networking. I talked at the beginning about the, the whole enterprise 2.0 idea. What we said was you know, users these days you know, a good percentage of them, a majority of them, know about things like Facebook and the idea of friending and how you friend someone and then you can follow them and you can uh, do various activities with them. Well, we've kind of mapped that into the printing space as far as being able to subscribe to printers. We don't call it friending printers because who would want to be a friend with a printer? 
but you can subscribe a printer. And as soon as you subscribe to a printer from any device that you're at, from the Torx app, that printer automatically shows up on every other device that you're logged into. We handle all of the driver mapping, everything else in the background. It just automatically shows up for you. Additionally, let's say you have other users out there on this network. You can friend those users, and then through that, you can share printers with them, and you can find their printers and uh, ask them to be able to print to them. So if you're in your office and you know that your buddy in the office next door has a printer you want to print to, you, know, you don't have to go over to him and say, can you go into Windows here in the printer's folder and right click and hit share so I can print something to your printer? You can just ask him to go in the Torx app and approve your request to print to that printer. And then this is also all location aware. So we see as you roam around the network what printers are nearby and you can define locations for printers. And we let you search and sort printers based on that. And then if you do want to uh, walk up to a printer and identify it physically, uh, you can do something like scan a QR code on that device and have it automatically be subscribed in your session. Sorry? Uh, it's on the roadmap. We don't have that right now, but that is something that we're looking at. So then, the, again, this is a single easy-to-use app I touched on already. This isn't what you're printing from. You're printing from your business application still. Uh, and we've got it available for all major platforms. You know, again, I, I can't stress enough this seamless experience where, you know, let's say that I'm at my office and I'm sitting at my desk logged into my workstation. I've got a few sessions open in Citrix, so you know, I'm using published apps, and let's say I have, I have things siloed, so I've got three different Citrix sessions, really. I can actually pull up my iPad, log into the Torx app, find a printer to subscribe to, and immediately that printer is going to be available in all of those Citrix sessions and on my local workstation. And so I don't have to worry about you know, the mapping of printers anymore. It happens all automatically for me in the background. And Torx is handling all of that driver setup. And I'll talk a little bit more later about how that actually is being handled. It's pretty cool, some of the things that we're doing. So now I'd like to show you a couple little uh, screenshots of the interface. Um, I highly recommend, after the session, stopping by our booth. It's hard to miss. It's right outside the door here. Uh, you can get a live view of the interface. You can see it running on the iPad. Uh, we've actually got it printing out there. We have a little printer sitting in our booth. Um, but so, you know, again, you've, you've got to log into this. Uh, we have this tied into Active Directory and all that. Um, so if you're on, like, a Windows workstation, uh, you'll never see this screen. This will happen in the background. Uh, but like on an iPad, you are going to have to enter in your credentials and pick a server. We're working with enabling this with the Citrix Works SDK and other uh, third-party MDMs to uh, tie in single sign-on into this application. Then once you log on, you'll see your dashboard. And so this is the Windows interface. It's got a very uh, Windows 8 look and feel to it. Uh, in your dashboard, on the left-hand side, you see the activity on the network. So it sees uh, and shows you as it discovers new printers nearby. Uh, it'll show you as you print print jobs and things of that nature. And then on the right-hand side, these are the printers that you've subscribed to. And so all of these printers that you see in this list are the same printers that you'll see when you are in your application and you go hit File Print. Now, if you want to get to more details about these printers, you can hit the Printers tab at the top, and then you get to see uh, more things and control more things about the printers. Uh, this is an earlier version of the interface, so there's not a lot of features shown in there, but this is where you'll get to things like the printer properties. And then if you want to find a new printer, uh, this is really like the stripped-down, easy-to-use view to find a printer. and so. You go to find printers, you'll see a list of all the printers on this Torx network. And as you hit the plus, that printer will be subscribed and you'll see it in your session. Uh, we've got in there things like being able to uh, sort and filter this list so it's easier to find the printer that you're looking for. Uh, you'll be able to hit a button in here and pull up the QR code scanner, for instance. So if you're standing next to a printer, you can scan it and have it subscribed. And so now I want to go over a little bit more about how the admins are still in control. So you know, you've seen the app. The users have that power of self-service. So they'll be able to go out and they'll be able to do things. And 
uh, subscribe to these printers and find them and print to them. But through our admin console, you will still be able to go in and force printer subscriptions to users. We have a policy-based interface on this uh, web console, so you can do things by name, location, pretty much anything that you can dream up. Uh, you can put into as a policy so that the users get those printers when they log in next. You can also restrict access to printers. Uh, so if you have a set of printers you don't want people to print to or a set of users you don't want to print to a certain printer, you can restrict that through our console. You can also restrict what can be printed and how much of it. Those are the print restrictions I was talking about earlier. And then the printer driver management. So, you know, for anyone who's not familiar with the screwdrivers technology, that's a virtual printer driver technology. It's a universal driver for Citrix in those environments. So what we do is we actually talk to the manufacturer's driver on your client machine in Citrix, find all the properties of that, uh, that printer, and then we virtualize it on the server. So you never have to install a printer driver in your session or on your Citrix server. We've actually taken that technology and applied it now to you know, just general Windows networks. So if you have your printer drivers, your manufacturer drivers on a print server, you really don't ever have a need to put them on all of your workstations. The screwdriver's virtual driver can go on all of the workstations, map all of those printers, and you can keep all of your printer drivers on your print server. It was a really important step that we took in creating this new product because now that opened up you know, our driver management to really be focused on just certain scenarios where you need manufacturer drivers. But we did want to help you with that. Like we still don't want you to have to go to that print server and manage those manufacturer drivers. So what we did was we created the central printer driver database that goes into your environment. And the Torque server is intelligent enough and these agents are intelligent enough to talk to the physical device, uh, you know, whether it's through USB or through TCP IP, find out exactly what make and model it is, and then go out to the database and find a driver that matches. And in the background, install that driver wherever it needs to be installed. So of course, the big step in that is you know, not the installation of the drivers at that point, it's populating the printer driver database. So the way that we are doing that, there's actually two different things that go on here. The first is something we call driver harvesting. So every Torx agent that's out on your network has the ability to upload drivers to the printer driver database. So as you install this agent on all of your print servers that you already have printer drivers on, the agent is going to pull those drivers into your driver database and index them. The other side of it is that Triceret is creating its own uh, public cloud driver database that you can actually attach your driver database to and when an agent goes and asks your driver database for a driver and you don't have it, it can then come up to the Triceret database. And we're working right now on populating that database with as many drivers as we can. You know, we're also going to let you crowdsource them back to us. So we'll let customers upload their drivers to us. So if we're behind on updating our database, you can do it for us. Now obviously, uh, there's a lot of drivers out there that are bad. You don't want them in your environment. Um, you know, Joe, you mentioned yesterday in your session that uh, LaserJet 4250 is just a horrible driver. Well, we, in the admin console for this product, we actually let you specify drivers that you want denied from your environment, uh, and you can remap those printers to other drivers. So if you do have an actual 4250 printer in your environment, you can map it to be that 4200 series driver. So let's review, kind of try to bring it back together. First off, you know, when you install this Torx agent, your users have access to any printer on the network. You know, that covers the, the idea of easily deployable and scalable. You know, it doesn't matter how many users you have, all they need is this agent and they'll be able to print. All of our communication is through SSL, so it's all secure. The only thing that's insecure in our network is that last mile from the uh, workstation to the actual physical device. That's something that we can't encrypt because we have no uh, software sitting on the actual printer. Users can share the printers uh, between their devices and other users. 
no administrator intervention required to be able to do that. So that's the aspect of it being social and having that user self-service in there. Those are really those enterprise 2.0 features that I talked about. The administrators are still in control. You know, that's the customizability, the, the flexibility. You know, I didn't mention a lot about the administrator console. You can do all your driver management in there. You can set up policies for what printers people see. You'll be able to see every agent that's logged into your network or is logged in in the past, what drivers are on that agent, what printers are on that agent. You, know, you can see that by user as well, so you can see everything about the user that's logged in. And then this back end, this Torx server back end, uh, we actually built this on a Mongo database. I'm not sure how many people here are familiar with Mongo. It's, uh, it's a class of database that's considered NoSQL. It's kind of like the, the anti-SQL. Um, it's very high performance. It's an open source uh, product that's run in a lot of uh, large consumer class products. It's very stable. Um, you know, this back end with the Torx server, I don't think I mentioned, you know, we do have the ability to allow clustering. So you can have multiple Torx servers. So if you have different data centers around the country, you can have uh, Torx servers in each data center. And they can all talk to their own Mongo database. Or you can have a central Mongo database that scales up uh, fairly infinitely. And so the point that I'm trying to make in all of this is that Project Torx is an enterprise class printing product. It's letting you do all of these things that we defined uh, as being enterprise class. And it's letting you do it not only in your mobile printing, but it's letting you do it in all of your other enterprise printing. So you can still use your Citrix printing, your Windows printing. You can start to migrate into this. You know, it's really just up to you as to how far you want to take this. But I want to make sure you know, that everybody here is clear that I'm not pitching this tech just for the sake of tech. You know, I am looking for early adopters, which you know, early adopters really are about tech for the sake of tech. But I really want you to think about this and how this could transform printing in your environment. Uh, there's a book out called Groundswell, which is all about uh, social technologies and their application in the enterprise. And they discuss this post method in that book. And so post, you really go down through this in order. Uh, you start with people, and you find out what are your customers or your employees' needs. You know, what can fulfill those needs? Then you have to choose your objectives. What do you want to do? Uh, what do you want to accomplish through this project? Uh, next is strategy. What are the different relationships that you want to enable through this? And then the last thing on there is the technology, deciding what technology to use. Maybe you'll go through this process and you'll figure out, well, I can just use AirPrint because of the way that my, print, my uh, users are printing. Maybe you just need to fix Citrix printing. Maybe you don't even need to worry about mobile right now, in which case there's other solutions out there for that. Uh, but you really need to keep the big picture in mind as you go through this. And so the roadmap for this product, we're in beta right now. The gold release is uh, slated for October. You know, anybody that gets on board now in the beta program, really in this early adopter program, you know, Triceria likes to listen to its customers. All of our products that we've created up until today are all built upon feedback from our users, from our customers. Getting in early is where you can have a real effect on how we create this product and the changes we make to it as we uh, get towards gold and then from there get into this roadmap. And so as we look to the future, you know, we're building in things like proximity printing, auditing and reporting. You know, I've talked about how this takes over your whole printing environment, so we'll be able to audit everything that goes on in printing. Advanced print features, you know, being able to access things like stapling and hole punching from mobile devices, that's fairly unheard of right now in the industry to be able to support that. We actually have a research project that's, uh, so far it's pretty successful that is working on that. You know, green printing, uh, paperless office isn't here yet, so we can't really be green. But what we can do is we can try to reduce the amount of ink you use or the amount of paper that you waste. So we're building some things into this application to help you with that. Uh, the load balancing and pooling, that's for print servers and printers, so you can have a pool of printers and uh, use it and manage it through our software instead of relying on Windows printer pools or Windows clustering for your print servers. And then integration with scanning. Uh, we do have a scanning product at Triceret. 
We're going to integrate it with this so you can share your scanners, share your scans, just like you share printers and print jobs through Torx. And I want to back up real quick. Uh, I did want to make sure that it's clear, everybody, this is licensed per user. You know, users these days have probably at least three devices, if not four or five per user. Uh, so it would be just a nightmare to license this per device. So we're licensing this per user, a subscription or perpetual based. So it's really up to you as to how you want to license this, but it comes down to how many people you have that you want to access your Torx network. And so you can see this in action at our booth. Like I said, if you're interested in beta testing, contact us. Uh, you can get our contact information at the booth or uh, come see me afterwards and I have uh, business cards I can hand to you. And then just real quick, I want to touch on a couple of our uh, existing products. I mentioned our scanning product. This is about scanning our remote environments. So you can actually take and uh, redirect your Twain scanners from your local client device up into your Citrix session. Uh, we support pretty much any scanner device, any Twain application. Uh, so this works a lot better than some of the stuff that's built into Citrix. Um, and uh, you know, we will be integrating this into Torx in short order. We also have a profile solution. Uh, it handles user profiles, customization of those profiles. Uh, we basically store all of our data in a SQL database uh, for that user. And so you're not depending anymore on roaming profiles. You can actually convert all of your users to a mandatory profile. And then our Simplify Profiles technology takes over and puts all their customized settings in. And all of this is integrated into the Simplify Suite, which actually includes other technologies such as a desktop and lockdown technology to let you manage your applications, lock them and secure them down, as well as some other things such as a, a stability product that uh, monitors applications. And if they start using 100% CPU, we can actually clamp that down. Or maybe if it's uh, been using 100% CPU for a long time, we can actually just kill that application. And so I invite you to check out those products. And actually, one thing I didn't list up here, which you know, is kind of an oversight, uh, we do have uh, printing products for Citrix right now. You know, we've had them for many years. Uh, screwdrivers and Simplify Printing are two printing products out there. So if you're just looking right now to kind of have that stopgap to fix your printing uh, in remote environments, you know, I invite you to take a look at those products and try them out. And then you know, once Torx is out and uh, you have a mobile device problem that you need to solve, you can upgrade to that. So that's all I have. I want to actually introduce Raja now from Goliath Technologies. Uh, Goliath is a partner of ours that uh, we actually were looking at creating a monitoring solution, but then we stumbled upon Goliath and they have a really cool product. So we said, hey, let's just uh, work with them and uh, Raja will show you some of the product now. So as I mentioned, we have two products. We have Monitor IT, which does enterprise-wide monitoring. Uh, we have API integrations into VMware's Zen app, Zen desktop, but also hypothetical for Netscaler too, which does net app flow analysis through Netscaler. We've been working really closely with Citrix for a while now, directly with the development team. So as they've been releasing uh, solutions, uh, and their solutions so recently with Zen Server 6.2, uh, as well as with Netscaler 10.1, we've been getting the code with them, working with them to get all that information and bring it back into our product itself. And so from inside of uh, Monitor IT itself, and I apologize, but it's not quite scaling as well as we wanted to. Um, we had the ability to see across the entire infrastructure, so all the different key components, we add that in. We do the API integrations into uh, VMware, as I mentioned, but also Zen Server, we support Hyper-V, and then Zen App and Zen Desktop, pulling all that data back together into one specific one view. And so one of the screens that we're looking at right now is a performance graphs. And so from here, we had the ability to see all the different pieces and tie it together on the same screen. So we can take what's going on your Zen App farm, we can take information about what's going on in terms of Zen Desktop, your, hyper, your uh, underlying hypervisors, and bring it together in one specific display so you can see how the performance is changing, seeing the IOPS utilization, seeing the latency, but also seeing how, this, how this, the uh, number of total Zen App sessions are taking place at the same time and how that's affected. So as your number of Zen App sessions are changing over time, you can see all the other key pieces showing up at the same time on the same display which is really, really interesting because then in the morning when you have boot storms that take place or those changes are taking place in the environment, you can have this up on the screen just seeing what's going on from all the different pieces in the same display, getting that network information and Zen App session data all in one place along with how the rest of the environment is reacting to it. 
And then if you need to, you can actually dig into what's going on inside of those sessions um, by going a little bit further in. So let me see if it brings it over. So this is some of the, uh, the Zen app visibility that we provide, getting all that data in one location so you can see it from one place. But more further visibility. And then all this information comes through as a result of a series of monitoring rules that we actually have. And if you guys don't mind, bear with me for just a second. I'm actually going to see if I can get the... Uh, hiding behind here. There it is. We actually have a display that's for Zen App and Zen Desktop specifically, so you can see all the sessions that are taking place in real time, and all this data will actually come exported out. You can export it into reports, so you can actually drill into these, so you can see all the different sessions across all the farms. We support all the way back to Zen App 4 or 5, all the way to current Zen Desktop 7 and the App Only Edition, all bringing it in together in one specific display. And then when you actually click on these different sessions, you can find out what's actually happening inside of that. It'll populate all the processes. You can see immediately all the applications that they're running in real time, um, as well as historically. The IOPS hit, the CPU and memory utilization, all from one location. So it all comes down together in one spot, and you can keep on chaining through this to find out what's happening in the entire environment. It's all then tied back, uh, right back to a main dashboard display, which actually breaks down your entire infrastructure. So you can see all your Zen app servers, all your hosts and hypervisors, all in one location, um, right from here. So all this information is all showing up here, and it's going to identify everything really, really quickly. So all it takes to get up and running, because uh, it, all you have to do is point us to your Zen app servers. We'll identify all the other servers in the farm, point us to your DD, deploy an agent to a DDC, and we'll identify the entire catalog, bring all that data back through. So what we're using here to do this, I mentioned, is agent and, ag and agent list. The API integrations that I mentioned, but also we have a really lightweight agent. It's only about a megabyte in size, no reboots, no dependencies goes out there and it starts pulling this information together. So you don't have to set up all this stuff. It does it automatically for you. We'll go out there, find all the systems that are present in your environment, populate it, and start monitoring it automatically, identifying some of the key issues that, we, that you have out there. So what we have is a series of monitoring rules that automatically get deployed, bringing up this information in real time so you can see exactly what's going on. It's looking for all the dependencies in Zen app, looking at the process level information that's taking place, identifying them for you. I'm starting to give you a baseline of what's going on in your environment itself. But what's really powerful is that any one of these monitoring rules, you can actually create a series of uh, remediation actions on them. So what we'll do is, for example, we have customers that have provisioning services. They'll actually have one of these monitoring rules looking for the free drive space in the drive cache. And between 3 and 4 in the morning, we'll automatically reboot that server if there's no users on there. And if there are users and you wants to do it unconditionally at 3 to 4 in the morning because you don't want that during the middle of the day, We'll actually send up a message saying, hey, listen, if you're on really, really late at night burning the midnight oil, guess what? The server's going down for a few moments, so log off, grab some coffee, and then it'll log off the user cleanly and then bring the system back up. So when everyone else comes in in the morning, they have a full running session. The system's fine, the right cache is free and ready to go, and it all, it's all taken care of for them. We've also got customers that just run backup solutions. They have other applications running on terminal services or just certain servers. These backup agents will actually fail sometimes, so we'll actually monitor that, see the service fail, let them know that the service has failed, but then restart it, and then go back to the management console for that backup solution, kick off the job again, so when they come in the morning, it's all good to go, and they don't have to worry about there being a bad backup job out there. And then all of this visibility can all be done from inside of Zen Center or vCenter, or if you have other solutions out there, we can actually um, integrate into those too. So let me see if I can... But um, so right inside of Zen Center, you have a list of uh, right down the left hand side, all the VMs of hosts and pools. And right inside, there's a tab for monitor IT. And inside of that tab for monitor IT, you have access to the entire, pro uh, entire software. Same thing with vCenter. Uh, you have the list of all your data centers and clusters, and then you have the tabs across the top, monitor IT is right there. Off of the main admin screen, you actually have access to uh, the actual icon for monitor IT as well, so you can see it in full screen, all from one location. 
and get access to all this data. And the whole point of all this is that we have customers that call up and say, hey, listen, I've got, I've got two or three different farms, or I've got 20 different Zen app servers. I've got my users you know, going across every single one of those. All, every single one of them. How do I find out what's going wrong? They can come into Monitor IT. They can find and do a look for that user across all the different farms. Because at the time, it's not happening right now. It happened last week. We can find that user really quickly, populate that display, tell you which stamp server they were on, what was going on with them, and then you can click on it and find out what the performance was like. And if they're running into an issue, we can pick up information even as, as nuanced as they typed in the wrong password to actually access an application. So when you're sitting there on the phone with the guy for about 30, 15 minutes in and you say, you know what, I, I, I'm accessing the application myself, I bet he's using the wrong password. They're never going to commit to it. They're just going to tell you that Zen app sucks. We can actually provide you that evidence in real time saying, hey, you're actually typing in the wrong password. I have the message right from the application. It happens you know, within 15 seconds, you'll get that pop up in the display itself. And you can see it right there. Um, sorry, I couldn't actually show it to you in the product itself right now. It's not quite scaling up. Not showing up on the display pretty well. But if you guys stop by the booth, take a look at Torx and also take you through a, a demonstration of our product as well. Uh, we're also going to uh, have access to uh, videos and podcasts so you can check it out on your own as well um, and take a look at yourself. Thanks again, everyone, for taking the time to listen to uh, what we had to say for Goliath Technologies about Monitor IT and Hypothetical, um, but also taking a look at Torx and uh, Triceratops Technologies. They're an awesome partner that have great solutions.